Welcome back to Change the World and we're here with the penultimate episode of AEW Tuesday Night Dynamite before the big pay-per-view show Full House in 12 days time. The focus of tonight's show will be the AEW Tag Team Championship Tournament semi-final matches and with that said, let's run the show. The episode begins with a recap of last week's show where Chris Jericho decisively defeated Joey Ryan in the main event of Tuesday Night Dynamite. Cody and MGF also prepared for their potential full house match with Marty Skrull and Hangman Page with a win while Madison Eagles became the number one contender to the Women's World Championship. Elsewhere, Kenny Omega confirmed that Pac would face him at full house in his first defence of the AW Men's World Championship. Moving on from this, the commentators introduced the show promoting the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament semi-finals tonight. To open the show, we will go straight into one of those matches. The first match of the night gets a C-58 decent rating as the Lucha Bros defeat the best friends in 14 minutes and 19 seconds. Ray Phoenix pinning Trent with a Phoenix driver. Ray Phoenix suffering a injury there, which is pretty concerning. I hope that's not going to keep him out of the pay-per-view. I'm not really sure the severity of that injury. We've got some good ratings from Phoenix and Penta, although Phoenix was slowed by that injury and Chuck Taylor and Trent somewhat below them. That's the opening match of the night and a concern there with the injury to Ray Phoenix. After the match, they stand tall if Ray is able to. The commentators put over that they are in the AW Tag Team Championship match at Full House. The winner of SCU v The Young Bucks later tonight will face them at the pay-per-view. We then go into a video package that recaps last week's main event and more the aftermath of Joey Ryan's defeat. Footage shows him being assessed by medical personnel in the back. Tonight he will speak out on his decisive defeat at the hands of Chris Jericho. We then get a Be In The Elite style segment. It's not really Be In The Elite, it's more like those um, Road To Double or Nothing videos they've been doing on the Cody's YouTube channel, I think it is. Uh, Britt Baker is talking to and getting advice from Brandy Rhodes. The AW Women's World Champion tells Rhodes of her intention to speak to Madison Eagles in the ring tonight ahead of their title match at Full House. As Britt Baker leaves, Brandy teases some news about potential new signings and new challengers to Britt Baker and the AW Women's roster. We then get a video package looking at the issues between Eva Lise Velez and Tessa Blanchard, particularly what went down last week between the two. Eva Lise Velez then picks up a pretty straightforward victory in the second match of the night, defeating Erica Reed in 7 minutes and 25 seconds with a guillotine elevated DDT. She gets a 46. I think that's better than what she got last time, and that continues to build her within the women's division. After the match, with Eva Lise standing tall for her victory, Tessa Blanchard runs down to the ring. She wants revenge for what happened last week. Velez makes it clear that she is ready to fight, but when Blanchard eventually slides in the ring, the opportunist will leave the ring. While Tessa will want to follow her, she'll be held back by a referee, which allows Eva Lise to escape. Taking a microphone, Tessa Blanchard will confirm that the two will go one-on-one -on -one in a singles match at full house. We then get another candid style segment similar to the one earlier with Brandy Rhodes and Britt Baker. Now the Elite are discussing their issues. This time only four men are in the room. MJF, Cody, Hangman Page and Marty Skrull. Cody apologises for the slap to Marty Skrull two weeks ago and it appears that there's some sort of breakthrough come in. However, MJF's attitude, which Cody appears completely oblivious to, continues to rub Marty and Hangman Page to a lesser extent up the wrong way. Cody doesn't understand the problem, which causes another flare-up. Reaching the end of his tether, Cody finally agrees they need to resolve these issues and they'll do it in a match at full house. Marty and Hangman Page are more than happy to accept the challenge. So everyone did pretty well there and that's another match confirmed for the upcoming pay-per-view. We then get another dark pre-recorded promo package from The Fringe. They're talking about and promoting their match with Hangman Page and Marty Skrull tonight. They put over the fact that they aren't members of the pro wrestling elite and they're in fact people who are looked down on and cast aside by the likes of Hangman Page and Marty Skrull. Priscilla Kelly then adds that she'll be in action later tonight against Mizuki and just like Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc, her opponent is going to find out how dangerous it is to get too close to The Fringe. A pretty poor segment there, but it leads into a decent match that didn't have much heat. Hangman Page and Marty Skrull defeating the Fringe in 10 minutes 32. Hangman Page turning the page on Jimmy Havoc, who was the weak link in the match. A, 50, a 56 sorry for Marty Skrull and a 49 for Hangman Page, so they were doing pretty well. Again, Darby Allen, an impressive performance considering he's not been pushed in the company. And he definitely appears to be a level ahead of Jimmy Havoc, so we'll see how far this tag team can go. After the match, they stand tall. They're ready for the full house match with Cody and MJF. That brings an end to our one of the show. <music> the 
Coming back to the second hour of the show, a video package is introduced and analysed by Don Carlson and Excalibur, which just recaps the events of the AW World Tag Team Championship tournament. It's been going on for a month. They just look at some key moments from the tournament. The most important information taken from the package, of course, is that the Lucha Bros have confirmed their place in the title match at Full House. The winner of Sokol and Censored v. The Young Bucks will face them to become the first AW World Tag Team Champions at the pay-per-view. We then get a sent-in video promo from Chris Jericho, recorded by himself in a luxurious location. He's just showing off about how rich, how powerful, how successful he is. He says that he's not at Tuesday Night Dynamite tonight and uses this as a chance to insult the city and arena that we're in. Chris Jericho talks about his Tuesday Night Dynamite debut last week and his dominant victory over Joey Ryan. He follows this up by confirming that he will compete at the pay-per-view full house and he is issuing an open challenge to anybody in the world. Again, we're continuing Chris Jericho's aloof arrogant character but also setting up that he will be at the full house pay-per-view. Mizuki then defeats Priscilla Kelly in the fourth match of the night 8 minutes 10 to hit a cutie special and win by pinfall. She gets a 40 rating a 33 from Priscilla Kelly not a very good match a 40 D minus. After the match Mizuki stands tall with a smile on her face happy to win. She is interrupted by B Priestley having not been seen in a while B's arrival surprises the commentators. They're wondering what the reason for her being out is. B takes a microphone and confronts Mizuki, who has no idea what the issue is. Priestley says that Mizuki is only here because her friend Yuka Sakazaki got hurt, and it should have been her, B Priestley, who took the spot in the number one contendership match, not Mizuki. B adds that she should have been the first AW Women's World Champion, and she isn't going to let Mizuki jump the line again. She isn't the only one in the locker room who is annoyed about Mizuki and her being given these opportunities, but she is the one who's going to do something about it. Mizuki is then left standing in the ring with B Priestley having made her point loud and clear. We then get the sit-down interview recorded earlier in the week with Joey Ryan. Alex Mav is asking the questions. He discusses his defeat to Chris Jericho. Ryan admits that he has never been in the ring with somebody quite like Chris Jericho, putting over the experience and in-ring guile of the legendary figure. Ryan says that Jericho might be right, he certainly is one of the greatest all time, but Joey Ryan vows that he won't be defined by what Chris Jericho has said about him, nor will he be defined by a single loss. We then get a video package looking at the dominant run of Madison Eagles, she is undefeated since her debut in AEW, she will face Britt Baker at full house. Britt Baker then comes down to the ring, holding the AW Women's World Championship over her shoulder. After promoting full house, Britt Baker will invite Madison Eagles to the ring. The challenger will make her way to the ring, but she's clearly not interested in discussing the match. Madison Eagles will make a short, simple statement, telling Britt Baker that she isn't here to be an ambassador for AW like her, and she wasn't part of the big first press conference. Madison Eagles adds that she wasn't given a grand entrance, she was just given an opportunity. Since Shoes Night Dynamite's debut episode, she has dominated the women's roster and she has one question for Britt Baker. Before she leaves the ring, Eagles asks what kind of champion comes into their own title match as the underdog. A 46 rating there, so again, Madison Eagles dragging Britt Baker up to doing better than she has been doing. Hopefully she can do that in the match at full house. Moving on, a recap package from last week, Kenny Omega informing Pac that he would be the one to face him for the AW Men's World Championship at Full House. This is followed by Pac dominating Brandon Cutler in 2 minutes 54, defeating him with a red arrow. Another impressive performance, a 78 from Pac. Brandon Cutler is basically been brought in as a jobber and he has a 23 rating, so that shows why. A C-55 though, showing that Pac can drag people to a much higher level. We then get him standing tall in the ring. The commentator is putting over that full house AW Men's World Championship match. We then get an interview with Kenny Omega, who is asked about Pac and that match at full house. Omega puts over the match, but wants to talk about the real focus of tonight, the semi-finals of the AW Tag Team Championship tournament. Kenny says as important as his title is, tonight is about his friends Nick and Matt Jackson. He adds that there's a lot going on in the Elite at the moment, and the Young Bucks making the AW World Tag Team Championship match at full house is just the good news they need. That leads into the main event, a C-plus 71 rating, particularly impressive performances from Christopher Dials and Nick Jackson who get an 80 and 88 respectively, but in 15 minutes, just under the 15 minute time limit, despite what that says there, the Young Bucks defeat SCU, Nick Jackson pinning Frankie Kazarian, following a Meltzer driver, Frankie there dragging the match down, but still a very good main event. After the match, as the Young Bucks celebrate their huge victory, the commentators put over the very first AW World Tag Team Championship match at Full House, which will feature two of the best teams in the world, the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks. Nick and Matt will take in their moment to celebrate the victory before Pentagon and Phoenix make their way down to the ring. 
with a storied history going back to the rivalry which culminated at AEW's first event, Double or Nothing, the tension is very clear and still very raw between the two teams. Tuesday Night Dynamite goes off the air with promotion for next week's Go Home show and the commentators putting over that while the Young Bucks won the first meeting between the two, their stakes are even higher at Full House as the first AEW World Tag Team Champions are crowned. So there it is, the sixth episode down, a C plus 68 rating, increasing our popularity in 30 regions and more than clearing our broadcaster requirements. Next week is the go home show to full house, so we're going to continue the build to all the matches that have been confirmed, as well as confirming a number of other matches for that pay-per-view.